The topic of this video is graphing techniques transformations. We will learn to graph functions using vertical and horizontal shifts. We will learn to graph functions using compressions and stretches. We will learn to graph functions using reflections about the x-axis and the y-axis. This will take place over multiple videos. We begin with an overview. Knowing the library of functions is very important. You need to be able to recognize that when you see f of x equals x squared, you're dealing with a parabola that opens up with a vertex at the origin. But what if you're presented with the function f of x equals x squared plus 1? That's a different equation, so clearly it will look different, but how? And what if the plus 1 is in a different place? What about f of x equals x plus 1 in parentheses squared? Will, they, will that be the same as f of x equals x squared plus 1? The answer is no. And to discover why, we need to investigate transformations of graphs, little changes to the equation, and how each change affects the graph of the function you started with. We begin with the kinds of transformations described above, shifts. Shifts come in two varieties, horizontal and vertical. We will discuss vertical first, then horizontal. Apply vertical and horizontal transformations, shifts. Vertical shifts. To move a graph up, simply add a number k to its equation on the right-hand side only. The number you add determines how many steps up the graph moves. To move a graph down, simply subtract a number k from its equation on the right-hand side only. The number you subtract determines how many steps down the graph moves. When a graph moves up or down, every point on the graph moves up or down. When you move a graph up k spaces, add k to the y coordinate of every point. When you move a graph down k spaces, subtract k from the y coordinate of every point. Let's look at an example. If you move the basic function f of x equals x squared up two spaces, what would the new equation be? What if you moved it down four spaces instead? What would the new equation be then? Provide a graph and table of points for all three functions. Okay, so to move f of x equals x squared up two spaces, we follow the rule stated above and add two to the right-hand side of the equation. We would get x squared plus 2. And because that's different, it's a different function, we're giving it a new name. Instead of f of x, now we're going to call it g of x. Okay, what about taking f of x equals x squared and moving it down four spaces instead? Well, we would subtract 4 on the right-hand side, and we would get x squared minus 4. And again, new function, new name, we'll call it h of x. To create the table of points, for our two new functions, g of x and h of x, we just need to add or subtract the y coordinates respectively. For example, to create the table of points for g of x, we add 2 to the y coordinates of f of x. And to create the table of points for h of x, we subtract 4 from the y coordinates of f of x. Let's look at this in graph and table form. First, let's look at the graph. All right, so this right here, the black curve, is the parabola f of x equals x squared. That's our square function. To create g of x, we said we wanted to move it up two spaces, and indeed that's what we see. If you take each of the points from the black function and move them up two spaces, it will create the pink function, g of x equals x squared plus 2. Similarly, if you take the points from the black function, f of x equals x squared, and move all of them down four spaces, it will create the graph of the blue function h of x equals x squared minus 4. Now to the coordinates. So the first two columns of this table show x and f of x for our basic function f of x equals x squared. These are the familiar points that we memorized from an earlier video. So negative 3, square it. What do you get? 9 negative 2, square it, what do you get? 4, and so on and so on down the table. To transform these coordinates, we have to understand that when a graph moves up two spaces, 
all of the y coordinates, which are shown here in this column, are adding to. Notice the little arrow here with the add to. So 9 plus 2 is 11, 4 plus 2 is 6, and so on and so on down the table. And now when you put these two columns together, these are the ordered pairs of the pink graph. The pink graph includes points like 0, 2, which you can see visibly on the graph, negative 1, 3, which you can see visibly on the graph, positive 1, 3, which you can see visibly on the graph. And if the graph went up higher, you could also see 2, 6, and so on and so on. Now, in a very similar fashion, when we take these two columns here of our basic function f of x equals x squared, and we subtract 4 from all of the y coordinates, that gives us a table for the blue function shown over here, where these two columns represent the coordinates x and y. For example, you might notice 0, negative 4 is one of the points on our blue curve as is negative 1, negative 3, and negative 2, 0, and even negative 3, 5. In fact, all of the points in these columns fit on this graph. We can see all of them. Okay, so this explains the concept of vertical shifting.